Hey everyone, hope you're doing good today. So I was just working on a newsletter for um, my Amish and non-Amish subscribers. Um, if you haven't joined my email list, please do so. Synergessence.com. Get you um, in on this. Um, and it's on brain health. Now, I, didn't, I don't mean ben, mental health, although brain health does impact mental health as well as our physical health, but really kind of beginning to focus on brain health. Now, in the midst of all of this chaos, almost like a civil war going on in the United States, I observe, I hear, I, I read, and I can feel it all here. So I'm not going to get into anything in particular here. Just know that my heart <laughs> is clearly with everyone. Um, regardless of the position that they hold, because for as much as we want to come against somebody and we do read an awful lot into what people are saying, the underlying, the, the basis for all of this is everybody is really coming at this from a perspective that is theirs. Okay. Um, Life, as I see it, is very much like a gemstone. It's multifaceted, which means, and we each have our own little, little window into what's going on inside of life. And this is all framed around the way we think, the way we were raised, the way, you know, our experiences. All of this is shaped. Our perspective is shaped by our own experience in life, our own circumstances, historically as well as currently. And so if you have somebody who's getting up in arms about one particular thing, what can we do to begin to look at that individual and attempt to understand, if nothing else, that this is clearly coming from their point of view? It's not about being right or wrong. It's about them trying to make sense of and them articulating how it's sitting in their brain, how it's hitting them. Again, it doesn't make them right. It doesn't make them wrong. It doesn't make you right. It doesn't make you wrong. It just means that that is how your brain is interpreting all of this. I have done um, videos here in the last week on namaste and just to kind of it's about honoring the light within i honor the light within you but in order to honor the light within you i have to be willing to honor the light within me and when we honor the light within ourselves that means we're standing in respect we're standing and we're grounded in who we are we recognize that you know we stand for love we stand for justice that in many ways, we're all saying the same thing. We're just saying it differently. But just being grounded in who we are. And therefore, we can grant the space, the safe space, for somebody to be able to express what's going on with them, how they think, how they feel, without getting charged up about it, because we're honoring the light within them. This is really what I see is essential to brain health. And it's truthfully, it's kind of cool. I mean, the way you can play with this energy. Um, but when you're grounded within yourself, again, being grounded within yourself and honoring the light in somebody else does not mean that you agree with them. It means you're, you've created this bubble, this, this space of safety for them to be authentic. You may completely disagree with them, but at least you're loving them through their own expression. I think one of some of us, or a lot of us, actually have this huge fear that, well, if we all have our different viewpoints and nobody can agree, you know, come to terms and agree with on um, one particular thing, this world's going to be in chaos. I disagree. That's your fear talking. Um, I do stand for justice. I do stand for loving one another. I do stand for um, finding another way. I do. 
again, I don't want to get anything political or I just, I want to avoid that. Um, Cause I thought, you know, I, I can, I can, I do, I understand where people are coming from. And, you know, I have, um, I had an experience just earlier today where I was listening to, um, he is a vet. He served our country in several wars. And um, some of the things that he was hearing on the news really just, I mean, it was, I walked up to the door and I could hear him screaming outside. He was in the house. I could hear it outside. I mean, he was that livid and he was yelling at the TV set. But I walked in and I listened. And what I saw was a man who devoted almost 40 years of his life serving in the military, had seen some horrendous, horrendous things that I wouldn't even, I couldn't even imagine seeing. And just listening to that and knowing the amount of emotional distress that he went through I could completely understand his position. I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it. But it was it was something that meant something to him. But what was interesting is this, I just I didn't I just held my ground. I just stayed within myself. I just honored the light within him. And it just de escalated actually pretty quickly to where he was speaking to me softly and gently and almost an entirely different human being altogether. But this again comes back to brain health. And um, it's being impacted greatly for those of us who are currently on the planet with emotional distress and environmental distress. And you know, this is the reason why I've done videos on why exhaling is, you know, and that's how we're gonna heal is by exhaling. Because we actually, the more, the deeper we exhale, the more room we have. And the more we're actually sending messages to the autonomic nervous system that it's okay. But the thing is, is that our degree of emotional distress and wanting somebody else to hear us and wanting, you know, and see, that's just it. Oh, that's, that's it. Think about all the yelling. All the yelling and, the, and, and the, you know, people just want to be heard. So for anybody who's afraid that if we don't stop fighting and if we don't, you know, if we cave, if you will, and sit back and listen to what somebody else's point of view is, that all hell's going to break loose. And so we cling to that fear. But what if that individual just wants to be heard? They just want to be understood. And what if in that space, that safe space, uh, even if they are yelling and you just sit back and you just look at, you know, you listen, you don't stare them down. You don't, you know, give them the dog, you know, dog eye. You just gracefully give them the space to express. Who knows where it can go from there? I mean, how dare any one of us try to predict how something's going to go just because we're giving somebody the opportunity to be heard. You know, we've got newscasters who get backlash all the time because they say this, they say that. You know, we have politicians get, and it's like everything takes is taken out of context because we come at this from our own mindset, from our own filters. We hear things in a funky way. But if we started giving each one of our, each one of us started giving another the space to be heard, I guarantee you the yelling would stop because there's nothing to yell for any longer, because we are being kind, we are being loving. And again, that doesn't mean that you're not taking steps to change, to create, you know, shifts happen to make absolutely necessary changes. These systems that we have in place are not working properly. They don't, they no longer work. They may have served us at another time, in another era, they don't work today. For anybody to think that we could do something 50 years ago and it's going to work today. No, we're different people. We're a different species. We're, we're reacting differently to the environment. 
we're different. This is part of adaptation, you know, holding on to rigid thinking about the way things used to be and how, you know, and we want to make it concrete today. That's called rigidity. That's not fluidity. You know, I hear all too often many people complain about, wow, you know, you know, we should just do these, these people today. It's, stop it. I mean, I want to, I really, I, I just went against everything. I'm not, I mean, I'll listen to it. I will listen to it, but I don't agree with it. There's a fluidity. Wow. I just, wow. I just stepped all over myself in that one, didn't I? Oh, well. <laughs> um, talk about transparency. <laughs> um, yeah, there's systems that we have in place that are no longer serving us. And, but maybe if we start listening to those people who do have that rigid way of thinking and we grant them softness, we grant them safety to express their concerns because look, life is changing in front of their eyes and we're clinging onto things that we know. I mean, I I can't even begin to describe that in this video, what I've witnessed in the last three months of people just really clinging onto what they already knew and being so afraid of life slipping away. And so that's a lot what I see in this rigid, fixed way we have to do things the way we used to do them and not giving people the chance to, you know, to in innovate and bring in new ideas, you know, just going with the flow. Going with the flow is something that is very diff difficult as you're getting older, what I've observed. I have no, I personally don't have a problem with it. I have always liked change. I, you know, and, and given the level of research that I've done and understanding just how much nature goes with the flow, I'm all there. <laughs> but as I was started to say, the brain health, this is significant, especially for those who are, haven't even arrived here on this planet yet. Um, we've got to find a different way to relate to one another. This emotional charge that we are creating. And it's, again, if you get into a group of people, you can observe this, you know, because we start to, you know, it becomes, it's contagious. It's infectious. I mean, you can see it like if you're in a group of people that's excited, you know, all the enthusiasm. And the same thing happens in, the, you know, in these, um, in the, in masses, you know, it's, it tends to go in. I, in a, you have very, very few people who walk away and go, ah, I can't get behind that. It, it's intoxicating. It's like, yeah, let's get here. And, you know, like I, I, in one of the videos, if you can see it, I talked about a swarm of insects coming in and they're all like, nee, 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 nee. I mean, they're all on a mission. There's a chemistry there, okay? That chemistry is being emitted. It's not just being, you know, in there. I mean, we're, we're not vacuum packed, okay? There's pores in our skin, the bugs, you know, animals, plants. It, it's, it's breathing. So chemicals are being emitted. <coughs> Pardon me. And they're being sensed by other living organisms. So when you get into that group mentality, the predominant energy, chemical energy, is being um, sensed by other bodies. And so you start to see this thing kind of grow. And this is one of the reasons why I actually did a video. I don't think I, I don't, I didn't post it because I was a little apprehensive about it. But this is one of the reasons why we want to step away at that point and really begin to talk to ourselves, not, you know, and just go, wait a minute, is this really what I want right now? If it is, then go for it. If it's not, then step away. But being aware observing how you predictably get involved with something and really just checking in with yourself and going, is this, is this authentically me? And if it's not, it's okay to step away. You may still have a passion about making change, you know, being an activist, conscious activism, highly recommend that book. You know, you can still take action, maybe just not in that arena. But the more willing we are to check ourselves, to check our mental health, because see, the thing is, um, the autonomic nervous system is um, activated by that um, hypothalamus pituitary and adrenal axis, which is notified by the um, 
amygdala, I always screw that up, amygdala, which is our emotion center. Okay, so the amygdala notifies the HPA axis and then all hormones start firing and we are activating the stress reaction. Okay, that's part of the reason why exhaling is important because it actually signals the parasympathetic nervous system just to kind of, all is cool. But if we're not willing to actually have that much control over our minds, then we really aren't willing to make a difference in this world. If we really think that force is going to make a difference, it hasn't historically. I, I mean, I've been seeing, you know, um, Madonna put a clip on Instagram earlier um, from a recent movie, 13th, I think it was called. And just a few minutes of this clip and you're just looking at this going the way we've treated people and this crowd mentality just becomes brutal. One person starts and another, you know, and the next thing you have people shoving and pushing. It's just, you guys, force has not historically worked. It hasn't. It's not going to make a difference today. It's the difference between overpowering versus empowering. And I'm saying it's time for us to empower our abilities. We have this mind. We have this mind that has the ability to regulate the system. And if our children, we want to, you know, we want to bring children into this world. We want to see a decrease in autism. We want to see a decrease in, you know, all sorts of congenital disorders. I mean, my goodness, I just got a new client, a six-year-old little boy. Aortic aneurysm. You know, it's we've got to find a way to improve our brain health, and we have that ability by paying attention to what is authentically us. Again, it's not going to undermine your ability to consciously you make, make conscious differences in this world. We need that. But how can we do this differently? Um, that's really the question I have on the table. I would really love to talk about oils here, but that's not what this platform is. I just really wanted to begin to open the doors up and say that our brain health is significantly and fundamentally the most important thing we could be doing right now in the wake of this civil war is really just checking in with ourselves, finding what is what we're passionate about, finding, you know, discovering what what differences we want to make in the world, how we want to stand up for others, how we want to stand united with others, and how can we empower massive change without trying to overpower and force anything because it didn't work. It hasn't worked. Try breaking it. Trying to force yourself to break a habit doesn't work. But if you want to empower change within yourself and you find ways to activate and uplift and encourage and find enthusiasm and have a vision, now we're you know now we're getting somewhere. And again, this is just a mediocre talk. So anyway, I hope you guys are well. I appreciate you watching and. Um, you have that ability. You have everything you need to control the way your body is responding, the way your mind is responding, the way you're responding emotionally. Allow people to be heard, regardless of how much you disagree with them. All they want is to be loved and to be heard. That's how we empower change. Just listen and be surprised by the amount differences that we can make by being kind and present. All right, I'll talk to you later.